This video is about a recent modification I did to my fab table, which has a rotary sanding grinding table that I made previously. I got tired of having to remove it, so I decided to make something to kind of get it out of the way when I don't need it and give me a little bit more space in my shop. I've seen a lot of videos where you guys have some really nice fab tables that you've made yourself on your plasma cutter. Um, my shop is a lot smaller. If you've seen the tour of my garage shop, um, I've basically got a three car garage, but I've got everything in a one car garage. So a lot of equipment crammed in a small space, but I can, uh, I use the space pretty efficiently. Anyway, getting back to my fab table. It started out life as a strong hand table. It's part of a modular series. Um, I guess if I was gonna do it now, I'd probably fab my own on my plasma cutter, but uh, this served the purpose so far. Anyway, I wanted to do some upgrades because I worked on a project recently, which I posted, which was a large uh, project workstation for a friend of mine. And I needed the fab table out in the middle of my two car garage. Where I parked my cars and I couldn't really move it. It was bolted to the wall. I had my vice mounted to it and uh, so and the wheels were just not working. So I, I mounted the vice on a hitch receiver like I did with most of my stuff and bolted it to the wall by itself. That freed the table up. I replaced the rickety legs with some wheels so that I could move it around a little better. And I also had my magnetic rotary table, which I built in a rush previously, and I really wanted to improve it. Also, removing it, because it's also in a hitch receiver, uh, was a problem. It used to be permanently mounted, but part of the upgrade I'm doing right now is this. So the table will pop up from underneath. It's pretty heavy. So I've got some cylinders underneath here to do the work for me. As I get older, I can't lift this stuff anymore. But you see, I've got the hitch receiver. And then I've got a rotary bearing. So when I put the magnetic chuck on here, I'll drop that in a second. Put the magnetic chuck on here, it, uh, it will spin. So I dropped the magnetic chuck in place. You can see what's going on underneath this. Get that out of the way for now. Anyway, so the magnetic chuck now is on a rotary table. Uh, I've made something to secure the wrench so that when I lift the chuck up, I can remove the wrench, but it just won't fall out when I'm doing something. And then I fabbed the new table on my plasma cutter. <laughs> which I dressed up a little bit because I've got an engraver. So I'm going to put that in place now and then show you how it's all working. So it fits on there nice now. Um, allows me to put my parts down when I'm doing grinding and finishing. And I can activate the magnetic chuck and then I can sand it. Uh, without the part moving around so it's working out pretty well and when I'm not using it I can drop the table which I'll show you sh as soon as I secure everything I'm going to quickly transition to a couple of photos so I can take a moment to describe the next two clips and to also show a little more detail about the mechanism for those of you who are interested it also gives me a second to talk about the next two clips that come up. Basically what I did was get underneath the table and point the camera up at the mechanism so you could see how the entire lifting mechanism worked uh, when it was finished. And you'll see a Desteco type toggle clamp on the right. But once the table comes up, because the cylinders I had were a little undersized, I used what I had in the shop. I had a little bounce when I leaned on the table, so I took a Desteco toggle clamp that I had and used it to lock the table in place.